Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian covering the DSCI show at the Excel Center in London. We're covering the show in partnership with DSCI and Clarion Events. And we have a real honor and treat. We are aboard HMS Argyle, uh, the oldest Type 23 frigate in the fleet, but also the one that has the most capability. And we're honored to be the guest of the commanding officer, uh, Commander uh, Toby Shaughnessy. Sir, thanks very much for having us aboard. You're welcome. Very nice to, uh, to meet you and have you on board here. Um, it's, a, it's an absolute uh, pleasure. Argyle is the oldest oldest uh, Type 23, but it's also now the one which has uh, the most capability. You guys came out of a 20-month availability uh, in the shipyard that ended in October 16. You guys have the Sea Scepter uh, missile, which I want to talk to you a little bit uh, about, and you've been commanding officer since April 2016. Correct. And uh, I think you're pretty happy that you're now underway and no longer in the shipyard. Uh, it's always a challenge to bring a ship out of a refit, particularly after such a long time, 20 months in upkeep. Uh, so to bring the ship out and back into service is, is a huge challenge, um, but the people themselves always um, look forward to taking the ship to sea and getting it operational again, and we've done that now, and we're really pleased with the way things are going. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, no pressure on you at all that First Sea Lord, uh, when uh, he was on the uh, dais uh, at the conference earlier today with the Defense Secretary, uh, Sir Michael Fallon, uh, pointing out that you guys were also going to get underway uh, on deployment to Latin America and then and then out to uh, Asia. And I want to talk to you about the preparations for that. But first, I want to talk about the capabilities you guys have, have fitted out on the ship. How is this ship different than other Type 23s now? And what's the kind of capabilities that you have today that are going to be fitted to the rest of the force of uh, eight ships, I think, that are in the Type 23 force? So the Type 23 has long been the backbone of the Royal Navy and our current duties all around the globe. Um, we've been in service for over 25 years and they're such a great general purpose uh, frigate that allows the Royal Navy to fulfill a full range of, of any operational task from high-end war fighting to humanitarian, uh, humanitarian aid and relief operations and anything in between counter piracy uh, and, and maritime security in general. Um, and that is supported by a, a vast range of equipment. We've got sufficient room on board the Type 23 uh, that makes them very suited for that. So we've over the years been able to add um, many different um, bits of kit as necessary to suit the mission that uh, we're being asked to perform. They've got great endurance of ships. You know, they're primarily run by diesel engines, which uh, give us uh, very good reach, long range. And that enables us to operate uh, all around the globe, uh, whatever we choose, uh, and fulfill all this variety of missions. And in terms of the new capabilities you got when you were in the shipyard, you guys were in Devonport uh, at the naval base where, where the work was done. Talk to us about the new capabilities and specifically what the Sea Scepter missile is going to be able to do for you guys. So the Sea Scepter missile um, is here to replace the legacy Sea Wolf missile, which is a surface-to-air, short-range surface-to-air missile, primarily designed to, to deal with air threats to the ship. What Sea Scepter brings is an enhanced capability, surface-to-air missile, it has greater range and can deal with a far wider target set than the uh, legacy Seawolf uh, can. And that now enables us to deal with not only current um, generation, but future generation uh, threats, uh, predominantly missiles to the ship. But also it enables us now to offer a, uh, a support to air defense capability. So we can now have a, an area capability in air defense, whereas before with Seawolf, that was somewhat limited to sort of ship protection only. Now we can offer that same level of defense, not only to ourselves uh, with a very high success rate, but also to other ships operating in a task group. So the future for the Type 23 fitted with Sea Scepter means we're now far better suited to operating with the uh, with maritime task group construct. And of course, that's particularly important now as we bring Queen Elizabeth into service uh, and Prince of Wales to follow thereafter. Um, and we can support those ships far better uh, now under Sea Scepter. Um, of course, this is a precursor, so um, we're coming online with the Type 26 and the Type 31 in the future, and those ships will also be fitted with Sea Scepter. Uh, and so, as well as enhancing the capabilities of the Type 23, we are also, of course, uh, the test bed, if you will, for, for those subsequent ships. And what are some other capabilities you got while you guys were in the shipyard? We've had uh, upgrades to some of our radar systems that complements the Sea Scepter system and enables us to do what we need to do with Sea Scepter and the two work hand in glove in that respect. Uh, we've had improvements to some of our communication suites. Uh, and underneath all of that, some of our command system, the backbone of the sort of the hardware of the ship has, uh, has been replaced with a, with a much more modern sort of fiber optic kind of system, 
and that essentially future proofs the command system a bit better for us so we enable it much easier plug and play uh, extra bits of kit as it comes on of course linked to all of that is uh, all the specialist equipment that will embark and they said they're mission specific equipment so we've had a lot of that equipment already hard installed into the ship to prepare us for our subsequent deployments Thank you.